I am with the Office of Agriculture in Afghanistan, and uh, my role is to what we call a contracting officer's representative. Uh, in other words, I, my primary role, especially in my relationship with Digital Green, is to monitor the agricultural extension capacity within the Ministry of Agriculture, Irrigation and Livestock, which we call MAIL, in Afghanistan. So that role is uh, to help develop the, the extension and research capacity within that ministry. So Digital Green's role, which we envision, will hopefully be uh, a vehicle to, to spread uh, extension practices throughout uh, the, the country of Afghanistan. Uh, we've uh, developed, or at least fostered, a very small relationship at this point with one of our uh, contractors. That's, that contractor is uh, managing one of our projects called Agriculture Research Exten and Extension Development in Afghanistan. So that, uh, that contractor will uh, hopefully develop or nurture a relationship with Digital Green to uh, hopefully implement some of these uh, policies and practices that Digital Green has obviously shown throughout the world, throughout Africa and India. So we're looking to Afghanistan for, uh, uh, as another perhaps uh, vehicle or model for Digital Green. We understand the constraints that uh, Afghanistan has, especially in the areas of gender, uh, and gender is one of the major constraints. Obviously, we have the, uh, the war, which is ongoing as well, and the very conservative nature of uh, the combatants, and uh, so uh, we can understand some of the hesitancies of uh, villagers to perhaps be displayed uh, on, uh, on, in the media. So uh, we, can, we can understand, and I'm, and I'm quite interested in seeing how uh, Digital Green will address some of these constraints. Our uh, initial uh, introduction to Digital Green was through our mission director. Our mission director was the former mission director here in, in India. So obviously he had uh, prior knowledge about Digital Green and he brought that knowledge back to USAID in Afghanistan. Uh, also, Riken uh, came to visit, uh, did a presentation at the uh, mission in uh, Afghanistan, in Kabul, and uh, I had the pleasure of meeting him and uh, was very impressed with his energy and his uh, approach and uh, explanation about Digital Green, and so I was quite moved, and I think as, as, uh, as was many others at the mission. And we're also looking at how to bridge the gap of uh, agriculture, especially agricultural extension, and health and nutrition as well. So we can see uh, the digital green model as a, uh, as a vehicle for both uh, agricultural extension and, and also nutrition. Yeah, I'd like to say that um, I, 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 I'm very impressed with the, uh, the number of, uh, of uh, people that have, uh, have experienced the digital green model and have taken it and, 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 and expanded upon it. Also, the village level impact. Uh, the, uh, my only concern or question would be the sustainability of the, uh, the model in the villages. Uh, I, I heard Rekin mention the mobile units and how various no, mobile phone or mobile uh, digital technology as one mechanism of, uh, of uh, extending the, uh, the, uh, the lessons learned. But watching one video or two videos, you know, it's, it's, it's not quite I'm not quite sure that uh, I'd like to see how that can perpetuate a, a policy or a change, not a policy, but a change in practice, you know, over a period of time. And uh, that's where uh, I think the challenge comes, is how this knowledge is perpetuated.